March the 15th through the end of April is spoonbill season in the state of Missouri and my nephew Captain Anthony Ford is a catfish guide who also guides for spoonbill. In fact during the spoonbill season he guides almost exclusively for spoonbill. He normally takes two trips a day so I asked him if he happened to have a cancellation or something could he take me out so that we could go spoonbill fishing and finally that day arrived. We were supposed to meet him at 7 o'clock at the boat dock but as it turned out on our way to the boat dock we happened to pull in behind Anthony so we decided we would just follow him down to the lake. It was getting a little later in the spoonbill season and some of the fish had been fished pretty hard so Anthony wanted to try out some new water. So he invited both me and my brother along while he searched for a different place to fish. Anthony fishes for catfish all over the United States and he's driving his truck that he's recently remodeled with complete living quarters in it. At the end I'm going to see if, if he'll let us look inside of it. He just got it finished. Anthony is a master at finding fish and once he gets the boat launched he's constantly surveying the water below utilizing the electronic equipment that he has on board. Anthony's dog Baxter is with him almost every trip, but he doesn't get too excited unless you catch a fish or somebody opens their lunch pail. Hey, Dills, I'm pulling. We'll just uh, kick him out probably about, about 50 foot here, I guess. I just got to make sure the drags are loose enough. Turn around here, go that way. Once I get turned around, just let about the they they run better. Make sure to, to 
put that deal in the water and start letting them out and then put them back in the rod holder before you stop it. You know, try to stop it and put it in the rod holder. Yeah, he yeah, observed it, yeah. Out. In order to snag for spoonbill, first you have to find the fish. And then you have to determine what depth you need to pull your grab hooks to have the best chance of snagging the fish. And then you have to control that depth. In order to control the depth, Anthony uses a variety of techniques, including both commercial and homemade planer devices, a downrigger style weight, and a variety of sinkers in order to control his depth. Today, Anthony is going to start out with a homemade planer device. While Anthony masterminds the whole project and tries to put all the pieces together, including driving the boat, my brother and I are out on the back deck patiently waiting for the snag hooks to snag into a spoonbill. We trolled for a while with no success until Anthony finally decided it was time to make an adjustment in what we were doing. He knocked me in the head with that lead that hooked on. <laughs> Anthony decided to add two more rods with downrigger weights on them. Speed up a little bit. Speed it up a little bunch. You can catch them out here. If the sun will shine and get warm, they'll go out here in the shallow water, I think, and warm up. Suddenly, the rod on my side of the boat snagged into a spoonbill. When one rod snags a spoonbill, the other rods must be reeled in quickly to avoid a big tangle up. Guess I'm over it. I don't know. No, I'm under. Big one. Know that? Yeah. Dude, I just don't leave it in the rack. I wasn't going to take it out. <laughs> it's a Hey, you in and the rod in. Okay, let me get up front of you just walk backwards. All right.
Usually the fish that are snagged don't bleed very much, but in this case we had hit a bleeder on the bottom lip of the fish and it was making quite a mess. Anthony tried to weigh this fish, but the scales were too small, so he said we'd have to wait until we got into the dock to weigh it. He went beyond the scales, didn't he? Yeah. He went bigger than the scales? Huh? Bigger than the scales? That's only 60 pounds. Yeah. Yeah. I've got a digital thing weighing later if you want. How you got a sling, I put them in the way. Okay. All right. Well, after we landed that spoonbill, it's time to head out and see if we could do it again. We were marking fish on the sonar, but they were deeper than Anthony would like to try to catch. We made one more circle with no success, and Anthony decided that it was time to go look for some shallower fish. When we got to our new location, not only did we find more fish, but the fish that we found were suspended further up off the bottom and should be easier to catch. We had just started fishing again when I saw this beautiful bluff and there was a cave in it. And I was trying to take pictures of a cave and I saw the shadow of a bird go in front of my camera. As I looked up, I saw an eagle, and I was trying to film this eagle. And the guy said, what are you doing? Don't you want to take a picture of this fish? Hey, wait to it. Yeah. I don't know this field, but Run your tail. Rich in your felt bunny. Or fast he loops around the tail. That's really he felt on. Man oh man. The little bitty fella. This fish was actually big enough to keep, but we're releasing it anyway. Our 
our original plan for this trip was to try to catch a couple of fish for a video. But Anthony said since that last one was kind of small, he'd like to try to catch one more. So he was going to re-rig, go a little deeper. That was on that short one, didn't it? That wasn't out very far, wasn't it? No, it was out on the bottom. I put that one all the way to the bottom. How far you want this dipsy doodle? Oh, about 40. Where are you going to need it? About 40 feet. We hadn't gone very far till we hooked into another fish. Fish? Yeah. I guess. I don't know. Fish or maybe hung up. Maybe it hung up. I don't know. I bet it's hung up. May just be hunt. Solid? It sure sounded like a fish way to come out of there. I said hung solid. It felt like a fish for a while, but it's moving it so. Fish? The fish? I thought it was, and I couldn't get no leverage. Yeah, it was just a big female. They don't have much bite to them usually. That's a big fish here. <laughs> she wants to come up. Come on up here.
We got to grip the boat. Bye, Bill. Well, what a trip. We had our two nice fish that we started out to get. And from the looks of the sonar images, it looks like Anthony has also found a nice place to go for his next session. All that's left now is to head on back, get back to the dock, get those big scales out, and see how much these fish weigh. Try to weigh these and get pictures and stuff. Yeah, I'd like to get a, I'd like to get a weight on them. Since neither my brother and I were strong enough to lift that biggest fish, Anthony had to hold it up for us. Well, there you have it, spoonbill fishing in Missouri. It was a great day for my brother and me, and I hope you enjoyed going along with us.